Malawi in a little town in a little village called Kata Bay and we are staying here at this lovely little resort cottage uh, cabins in Mayoka village. So it's very rustic here and it's like very much reminds me of like Canadian camping but in Africa. So they have really neat activities that the girls are going to love to do, right? There's going to be snorkeling, kayaking, stand-up paddle boards. Um, tomorrow there's even a boat ride out to an area where they can jump off the cliff. So it's going to be really cool. It's going to be lots of fun. Yeah. So we're enjoying this nice place. It's a nice cold smoothie. And it's delicious. Okay, so we were on the bus, right, and uh, the girls needed to go to the bathroom, so they kind of stopped along the side of the road where there's like somewhat of homes made of brick, and they're like, is there any bathrooms or whatever in their own language? And the guy's like, uh -huh, uh -huh. So then we stopped, and then the lady prior to when we stopped had an umbrella, which was good because it was downpouring rain, and we were walking through this like orange mud slipping, and it's like slippery mud, right? So when you're walking through it, you, you almost like slide and fall down. Then we get to this guy's house and he's like, oh, come on in, come into my house, here's my flip-flops, here's my shoes, have my shoes. Oh, and he's walking us through his house and there's like, it's like black in there because there's no electricity because they turn off the electricity in this country for like, I think the lady was telling me like they turn it off for 10 hours and turn it on for 12 or off. Like it's been like this for a whole year. So <laughs> it's kind of crazy. And then he's like, oh, I'm sorry, my roof's leaking and there's like mud puddles in his house. And then he's telling us how to use his bathroom, and then his bathroom door is like got this like screw to lock it. He's like, here, you just kind of move the screw down to lock it, and to open it, there's like no way to get out. So you have to like lift up from here where there's like a little opening. And then he's like, I'm sorry, there's no electricity. So here's my flashlight. He like puts his flashlight down on the his bathtub, and his bathtub was like, <laughs> he was like, I wouldn't want to go in that bathtub. <laughs> it's like. It's like really bad. And then there's like toilet. And then he's like, just take your time, you know, enjoy, relax. Just just do your own thing, you know, like do your business. <laughs> so we went to like some stranger's house to go to the bathroom. And then I leave and he's like, Here, I'm a school teacher. Here's my phone number. I'm like, oh cool, are you on WhatsApp? He's like, Yeah, yeah, I'm on WhatsApp. I'm like, alright, I'll WhatsApp you. So that was our like experience. Hey, we are on Lake Malawi right now at Mayoka Village Resort, which is this beautiful little resort right here on Lake Malawi. We're in a place called Katabe, and um, there are all these little kind of like homes that are all different and unique to stay in, and you're like kind of like in this tropical environment. And it's like absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, and we're right now going down to like the main zone. We're going to do some school. Um, and then we get to go on this amazing boat ride to go to this white cliff, it's called. We can do cliff jumping, 
we're going to be able to um, feed some eagle fish and then we're going to do beach volleyball and it's just going to be a really nice afternoon and so come see what it looks like in the reception kind of zone it's like this really relaxed kind of chill zone it's just amazing <laughs> We're about to go jump off a cliff and we just fed eagle, it's called a fish eagle or an eagle fish. It's like an eagle, typical of Malawi, and we threw fish in the water and he came down and swapped it up and ate it, so it's really cool. And right here, it's not that high, that's the cliff we're going to jump off of there, right there. It's so okay. It's not, not too high. high. So here we go. <laughs> it's all going. Jillian, you want to hold this? Apparently we read there's crocodiles in this lake, so we're just hoping there's none around here because that's a little scary, but not too far off. A year ago, 2016, sorry, two years ago, a man got eaten alive by a crocodile, so the lake's pretty big. So we're hoping they're on the other side today. You want to come play? Malawi quite a bit. So we 
still have these little lanterns, so we're all good. Good lanterns, good pizza. Music's still playing. We're good to go. Someone has a pizza. They make their butter fresh here. And all their eggs are their own eggs. They make their own ice cream too. It's really cool this place because it's like there's a lot of vegetation and everything's like homemade here, so. Is it rare in the river? No, in the river you don't want to go in the river. So right now we are going to get a bit to the little village to go see the run, just to go see the shop. Because Chloe lost her tooth, so she gets tooth fairy money that she gets to go buy maybe a little bracelet, right? We're going to go see what treasures we find. And it's a short distance. We're about 10 minutes walking from Mayoka village, or lodge, so not too far. Right behind me, this is the river. So this is the area where you don't really want to go swimming. It leads right into Lake Malawi, and that's potentially where you would find a crocodile. So it's all good in the lake, just not in the river feeding into the lake. Right now we're just at a pharmacy and it's very common here for people to get malaria, like super, super common and it's not a big deal. Um, so we're buying this kit and um, in here there's a thing to poke yourself, there's 25 strips, so way more than we need, but you can just do a self-test, you do the strip, and if there's two lines, you're positive, and then um, you just take pills, so, and then it just goes away, so it's not like as scary as what people think it is, you just have to kind of be prepared and not let it get to a certain level. They always say, like, if you're not feeling good, just test it, just that way you're safe and you know that you're, you don't have malaria, so. So there you go, so we're going to be prepared. We're also getting these little um, anti-parasite pills that you can take six weeks after you go swimming in the lake here because there is risks of parasite depending on where you're going swimming. So because we're going to go be going to like Monkey Bay area and um, there is more potential risk there, so we're just getting all prepared so that we're safe and sound. This is our unboxing video, and it's not an iPhone. We're unboxing a video on how to take malaria strips and test yourself. So it's fun. You get these little pokey things to poke your foot. And then you get a little stick. Not sure what this is for. You get a strip. You get little disinfectant things to disinfect the area first. And then you do it. Dr. Chantal. Yeah, the base that's used. This one. This one. Would you like to be the honors of doing it? Would you like to do it? No. You can do it because you'll be doing it, so it's a training. <laughs> And it's good for four weeks, so you take it and then you're technically immunized, if you will. Uh, but we still have our handy dandy kit in case we do need to do a test, we'll know right away. So there you go. All that to get all that was about 20 US dollars to get the medicine strips and um, anti malaria pills. And um, so we're good to go. Let's go. general here is absolutely amazing like they have the most delicious food ever so and it's all homemade so right now we're having 
muesli with um, homemade yogurt, homemade yogurt, and fruits. What else? And homemade muesli, muesli. Yeah. Yeah. Homemade and and nuts, muesli. bananas, apples. I'm not sure that the muesli is homemade, but it's, it tastes homemade. It's really good. Mm. All right, so we're here. I'm putting these two lovely teachers on the spot. <laughs> But they are here all the way from England, and tell us a little bit about how you how you found this opportunity, uh, what brought you here, and, and so on and so forth. How long are you here for? Here? Okay, so I'm here for a year. I came out in August, and I'm here until July. Uh, perhaps a bit longer, but we will see. Um, I am a teacher in England and just really wanted a bit of a change and Malawi is amazing. The most amazing school, most amazing children. There you go. Yeah, and I'm here for eight months, so I get home in August as well, not even April. And I was so only... Are they always looking for new teachers? Yeah, always. So always. if you want an opportunity to come experience Malawi, experience a little bit of Africa, this is the place to come if you have the teaching skills. And, it's super um, cool. It's really cool. And then awesome. there's like something happening at this school. And so what they're doing is like a bit of a fundraiser, or they did in the past, and I'm sure they're always going to need to be able to expand and grow. And what it is is um, they did something. So explain a little bit what you did and what was the reason why and stuff. And we'll put a link. Um, to the video below so you can see some of the kids and what their goals were and, and so on and so forth. So. Oh, thank you. So we were, we did a sponsored swim, how long ago? About a month ago? About a month ago. Yeah. About a month ago um, to raise some money to, um, initially our idea was to take the kids on a school trip. So all these kids in Malawi have never seen an elephant or a crocodile or a hippo. So imagine. And they all live in Malawi. So all these animals are basically for tourists, which is very wrong. And what was our initial thought? So we were going to take them on a school trip, and then we thought we'd expand it and get some computers and resources. And now we're looking at maybe getting some solar in because yeah. the power cuts in Malawi are terrible. Um, we had been experiencing 25 hour power cuts at a time, so for using anything like computers, it's very difficult. So we're looking yeah. at maybe getting a small solar system into school so then we can use the computers when we need Why to, can't? not just when we can. So imagine yeah. all of you guys watching who have internet non-stop, power non-stop, YouTube non-stop, uh, you can go to the zoo anytime you want. These kids don't have that same opportunity, so these wonderful teachers are helping that make it a reality and, and change it a little bit for yeah. these students. So, so um, we did a sponsored swim with the children, so um, they went and did some swimming in Lake Malawi. And if you go, we've got a Facebook page as well, Good Hope, I think it's in Carter Bay. Um, and we've got some live streaming that we did there, and you can kind of see some of the things our kids Yeah, We'll put well. all the links below so you can see it and uh, and if you feel moved to help and donate, then that would be awesome. So. Please do. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Hello. Hi, this is India and, and Yoni. And Yoni. And Hilda. And Hilda in a distance. Okay, tourists of your school. Yeah. This is grade two. This is grade two. This is grade two. two for it hands up. Me. 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 You're all in grade two. Oh, This is three in here. This is great sweet classroom. Very cool. Look at what they're learning. All these different things they're learning. They're learning to vision. Yeah. That. And tables. And this is grade one. This is grade one. So grade one is actually a little tiny classroom. So this is for the younger. So soon you guys are going to outgrow it and need a bigger yeah, school, right? Yeah, we are. We are, we are, we are. And you guys just come and try some Malawian food. Okay. Have you tried it? No. You haven't tried Sima? No, never. <laughs>
So here I am with Catherine, and Catherine is the owner. Her and her husband, Gary, own this beautiful property. And uh, she's gonna take us on a little tour and tell us a little bit more about how this all got started, um, what inspired them to grow it, and um, a little bit about their story. So tell me yeah. about how you ended up in Malawi. <laughs> um, well, originally I came to Malawi because I wanted to, I'd been here before and I wanted to learn more about my great grandparents that had lived and worked here. They were, came in 1946 and um, finished their lives here and, and built a house here and a school. So I had heard stories. I actually have a picture of myself at two years old, sat on the beach here in, in Carter Bay. You're kidding me. Eating the sand, yes. So this is kind of like ingrained in her um, DNA. I mean, this, yeah. is, this is her roots in a sense, even though you're yes. from England. But but I am. I'm she's... born and raised in, in the UK, but um, that photo, you know, it's, I didn't have a physical memory of it. I only had the photo. So it was always in my mind, I have to go and see for myself. And come back. Yeah. And so then... little did she know. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, and then I guess so then you came back and then... I came back just to, to, to find out more about Malawi. I was a student at university so I had a long holiday and plenty of time to spend and um, I was really fortunate to meet people who had lived and worked with my great-grandparents and they were really inspiring people and it was them that planted the seed in my mind that I want to live this lifestyle. That they were living in the forest with next to a waterfall and they built their own house and they were, had their own electricity from the from the waterfall and they raised their children in the village and it just seemed so idyllic and that was my beginnings but it all got sidetracked on the way <laughs> <laughs> so your beginnings of what your your plans were and your goals and then yeah. and then this all came about which is kind of in the same Kind it's similar. similar. It is. It wasn't exactly what I had imagined, but it's better actually. Even better. Yeah, that's right. All right. Um, and so then I came back to Malawi in '98 um, with the plan to try and find a way to stay longer, but I wasn't sure how that was going to work. I just figured it was worth a try, and and I was fortunate enough to meet my husband Gary, who I didn't know at the time. And he had the idea to build a lodge and to, to live in Encada Bay and um, was willing to teach me and that's how we got started. Here you go. Yeah. So we are sitting right now, like obviously behind us is Lake Malawi. At once, how many people could be hosted here? Technically. We've got beds for about 40 people. 40 people. Um, so it's pretty big. Yeah, it, it, a lot of it's dormitories and most of the time none of the rooms are occupied exactly so it's normally less than 40 yeah so um our average is about 20 25 people yeah and uh, now it's off season so in the rainy season it's more like 10 people five people sometimes yeah and so when is rainy season it is right now in... it's rainy season from the end of december until the end of april okay it's quite long yeah but that's why you get such a luscious uh, greenery and yeah. beautiful colors and everything so it's my favorite time of the year. Is you it? Get, you it's get cooler. It's well. It's not so much cooler, but no? the clouds mean that you've got uh, beautiful sunsets and and sunrises, which you don't see in the dry season because it's just pure blue skies. So there's nothing for the sun to reflect off. Oh, gotcha. Um, yeah. And and it's really green, and so and the, the storms are interesting. Yeah, you know? so it's and a it, lot you more sleep. Energy. You sleep good when you have the rain trickling. You can yeah. hear it. And, Okay, well, let's go check out the lodges and yeah. take a tour. Take a look around. Yes. It's because it's so funny in dry season, as it gets really, really hot and really dry and you need the shade, all the trees lose their leaves. Oh, right. And so it gets really like bare looking, not so bare, but quite bare looking. Compared you know? to now. Yeah. Wow. And a lot of the staff, they stay on property or no? Do they live on property as no, well? No, nobody Not lives so on site. Oh, okay, everyone yeah. is awesome. Only the teachers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, but everybody lives really close by, like literally just up the road. Up and, around the yeah, corner. all of us. Tell us a little bit about your school while we're at it. Okay. So um, we've got a small school. Um, it's, at the moment, it's got 20 children, three classes. Mm -hmm. And they're all the children of staff working here at Mallorca. 
That's amazing. Um, and it's something we can do to help each other and, and to, to do better by our, our children, all of us. Yeah, so. It's like you brought homeschooling to a whole new level. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what it was. It was homeschooling scaled up slightly. There's an idea. You can attract homeschoolers and stick the kids in school, give the parents a break. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. We've actually done that. We One of our volunteer teachers came with her daughter. Oh, really? And joined the school for a while. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. And she was a little bit older, so she had her own homeschooling package. But okay. she that's yeah. what she did you know she, she sat, just went there she joined the class while her mom was teaching she was busy doing her own thing oh that's smart yeah, yeah. it was really nice so you wake up in the morning and this is what you're looking out at it's like dreamy okay tell us a little bit about how i guess they the home started because they weren't always this elaborate or this extravagant right no that's right this, this one is a year old now but when we opened we had just six mud houses so they were built with sticks put in the ground and mud just packed by hand wow. on the outside. Um, and we had six of those and they were really very simple. They had um, grass roofs <laughs> and um, they were tiny. You could just fit one bed and one chair inside. Mm -hmm. And that's how we opened. Um, and then slowly, slowly over the years, we've learned a lot of building techniques and we've been able to afford to build a bit more stronger and hopefully longer lasting because you've got to fight the elements and all the animals and termites and things that you that you get and here. even monkeys right and like monkeys yeah they jump on the roof and one year we had so many chickens living here and they were eating all the grass roofs and scratching all the grass off and oh so gosh. we had to think of ways to combat that as well <laughs> different type of problems yeah <laughs> we're gonna go inside and see what it looks like inside welcome oh look at that it's got like a cool design too on this one. So you all have the sleeping nets, which is good. Although there's quite a breeze, so there's not the mosquitoes are really not that bad. And then again, the windows that open up right into the yeah, view of the lake up. like this. So um, when it's hot, it's nice. You can just sleep with all the windows open because you've got the net to protect you. Yes, and the crossbreed. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now we have 15, 15 rooms, and we've got, also got two dormitories that sleep eight and six people. Okay, yeah. so you can come and just book a bed technically yeah. and stuff. Yeah, a lot of people who are on a budget like to just have a, a single bed, and, and it's also a good way to meet people if you're traveling alone. Absolutely. Yeah. I found we've met some amazing people here already. It's been really yeah. nice. And then what about tents? Is there ever an option? And we've got a tiny campsite. Tiny campsite. Yeah, so, if so somebody it's for small tents. Um, People these days seem to travel with cars and rooftop tents. We don't, we, we can't manage that, but we've got a small campsite, so. That's available. Yeah. Well, there you go. All right, well, thank you for the tour, Catherine. Pleasure. Mm -hmm.